Good afternoon, everybody. What is going on? I am Jeff Grant Media, and today's a real user review. We're gonna be talking about the Tropic Feel Shell Backpack. Now, to get this out of the way, right up top, Tropic Feel did reach out to me, asked me if I want to take a look at some of their stuff. I said yes, so they did send me this backpack and the travel accessories for free, but all of the opinions in this video are mine and mine alone. I did not share this content with Tropic Feel prior to publication. They will see this when you do. No matter how many times I say that, it is always a mouthful. So the shell is a travel bag, meant for like one bag travel. This goes from about 20 up to I think 42 liters. So this is expandable, both on the sides with compression strap and through the bottom, there is a two liter expandable shoe garage. We'll get all into that, but I did not travel. So I'm gonna wanna get this way also right up top. I did not travel with this bag. Uh, I did tell them when they reached out to me, I said I don't have any travel plans set till October and I know what I'm taking then. So this will not be on that trip. They said, that's cool. Just take a look at it and tell us what you think. So I did pack this out with what I would take for about a week's worth of travel. Um, and I put it all in there. I'll talk about that again a little bit later on, but uh, I wanna just get this out of the way that uh, I did EDC this bag for the past three or four weeks I've been EDCing this pack. So most of my experience with this bag is dur during a everyday carry, not with a travel um, because I'm going to Florida in like a little over a month, uh, which would have been two plus months out from when I actually received the bag. So EDC this bag. But let's get into it and we're gonna start with the specs. The Tropic Feel shell comes in five different colors. Core Black, Fog Gray, as seen here, Orion Blue, Chocolate Red, and Clover Green. The bag comes in at $249 USD. It ranges in size from 20 to 42 liters, with 20 to 40 liters being the internal capacity of the bag and the extra two liters coming from the stashable shoe garage. The wardrobe travel accessory is $99 USD and is only available in black. They also sent me a toiletry kit that comes in at $90 USD and their front pouch that comes in at $80 USD. Both of these are available in matching colors for the shell and attached to the bag via magnetic fid locks. And that's pretty cool. You actually pull these two tabs right here. It will disengage the fid locks and it will pop off. And then you could see there are four posts on the front of the bag and you could see the slots on the pouch. They'll slide in and then to disengage, you'll just pull this. It will kind of pop the lock off the top set and then it'll just pull off from the bag. And to put it on, it's kind of pretty simple and self-explanatory. It just kind of locks in there. Give it a little push just to make sure. And now it's on there, it's pretty secure. And now we're gonna go ahead and start with the negatives so we can end on a positive note. And the very first negative I have with the bag is that the bag itself and all of the accessories alone completely empty, they are actually pretty heavy. When I grabbed the bag to put it into rotation, I had all the accessories kind of stuffed inside of it. I picked it up and it actually felt like it was almost completely full because the bag just had a lot of weight to it. You know, it was pretty flat because the accessories were in fact empty, but just the weight of the bag and the accessories alone is pretty heavy. So if you're looking for a light one bag travel, you're probably gonna wanna look elsewhere because the bag itself is pretty heavy before you put anything into it. The next negative is something that I absolutely hate on bags and it is a thin grab handle. So this is way too thin, especially for a pack that is expandable up to 42 liters. So when I'm grabbing it by the top or the side grab handle, this is going to dig right into my hand. This is not wide enough. Right now I have this, my full EDC loadout in here and I can pick it up and I can already feel it. It's digging into my hand. This is already uncomfortable. If I had to carry this with any more weight in it, it would just downright hurt. And as I said, there is one on the side and one on the top. Both are just these very, very thin, folded over pieces of webbing. It is about a one inch piece of webbing that is just folded over to give it some thickness, but that thickness would be better served if it was wide so it could span across the palm of the hand, making carrying it a little bit more comfortable and uh, just plain old usable. Now the next negative is all of this rear organization of the back. It's not actually all usable. 
Now we have our rear laptop sleeve that right now I just have my tablet in, so I don't have a lot in there. And it is suspended, it is a little bit off the bottom of the bag, but I feel like there's enough sag that it's actually almost sitting on the bottom of the bag. Anyway, then we have one, two, three, four, five zipper pockets, but they all occupy the same space and they will push into the laptop sleeve. So I don't actually have stuff in all of them and the bulkiest thing is going to be my, uh, oh, I can't even find what pocket it's actually in. <laughs> is going to be my Aleve that I use for my terrible back and knees that I have destroyed over ages and ages of skateboarding, biking, running, jumping, climbing, hiking, all the sorts of things that are you know rough on your body. But all of these pockets share the same space, so you can't actually load a bunch of stuff in here. Like there's nothing in this pocket. I don't think I have anything in this pocket. No, this pocket is empty. That's very tight. I can barely even get my hand in it. I just have my cortisone and two Sharpies in here. And then I believe the front or the bigger zipper, I have a couple things. I just have like my very thin uh, green room 136 pouches on my pocketbook, my tuna tin and my sardine tin in there because they are fairly flat. And that is everything that I could fit in here. I can't really fit anything else in these pockets because they're packed out. So I'm using three out of the five uh, four if you want to count the laptop sleeve, but they all occupy the same space and it's very tight So you can't actually fit a lot into this organization even though there's quite a bit of organization You can't actually utilize it because it, you can't fit everything in here just because it's too tight And that's it for my full-on negatives Two, I kind of feel are a big deal this uh, These grab handles these should be much much wider on a bag this size to really help you carry Especially if you're traveling with this the bag itself is pretty heavy to begin with so adding all the weight of all of your clothes and everything in here, that's gonna really hurt the palm of your hand if you're trying to carry with that very, very tiny, thin grab handle. So those really should be like an inch and a half wide at least, so you can get some good uh, distribution of weight across the palm of your hand. And that rear organization, there is quite a bit of it, but you can't fully utilize it, so I feel like it's just a lot of wasted space inside the bag, adding a little extra bulk that could be removed, you know, remove some of those zippers and those zipper pulls, could help to alleviate some of the weight of the bag because you can't fully utilize all of them at the same time anyway. Uh, so just removing them might actually cut down on a little bit of that extra weight that is in the back. Now we're gonna go ahead and move into the points of note of the bag. And the first one being these compression straps right here. You're definitely gonna wanna utilize these even if you're using it as a travel bag because it really helps compress this bag down. But if you're EDCing it, such as I did, the bag gets really big at 40 liters if you're not using them. And I do really like the uh, green accents that go with the fog gray. And you're gonna wanna utilize the compression straps. And because you have quite a bit of strap here to expand the bag, you're gonna also wanna utilize the strapper keepers. These could be a little bit of a pain because they are snug, but that is the intent of them so they don't come off when you don't want them. Them. So what you're gonna wanna do is just kinda fold it over. Try to do this looking at the bag instead of upside down makes it a lot easier. And then you're just gonna wanna kinda feed it through. And again, this is only looking awkward and difficult because I'm doing this upside down as opposed to looking directly at the bag. You kinda pull it through and that really helps to clean up the bag, the overall aesthetic, the look of it, and it keeps it a little bit safer so you don't have that extra strap dangling that can get caught on something. So utilize your compression straps and utilize your strapper keepers for them to help uh, maintain a cleaner look on your bag. The next point of note is something that I mentioned in my unboxing video, but I didn't actually realize what it was used for until I started using the bag. And that is this pass through on the back of the bag. So it goes through and I didn't understand what it was for. Usually you would slide a hip belt through here, but this bag actually has an attached hip belt. So what the uh, pass-through is actually for is to tuck the hip belt away if you're not using it. So you can tuck the hip belt away. It is, disappears right under there. Let me just spin the bag around and make it easier on myself. So it tucks away right in there. And I also use it to tuck away the, uh, if I could pop it out here. This is a bit more of a pain in the butt to get in and out, but there is a luggage pass-through that is connected via a G-hook that I am not utilizing. So I was actually putting the luggage, the trolley loop also through the pass-through and getting it on the, the uh, loop on the other side because I, I don't utilize this, especially as an EDC. So it was just helping to keep the bag look cleaner and get this out of the way. And there is something else that I didn't notice 
people called me out. They did notice this after the fact, but people were calling out in my comments on my unboxing. There is actually a passport pocket, but as you can see, the zipper stopped because I hit the loop for the luggage pass-through. So there is a passport pocket that I missed in my original video, and it is a fairly decent size. It does go the whole width of the bag, and it is about as long as the zipper, which I'd say is probably six or seven inches long, but it does bump the tab for the luggage, the trolley pass-through, the trolley loop. So you're gonna wanna hold that back with one finger so you can get a clean zipper on zip, because if you're not paying attention, you're probably going to unzip it and hit the tab and then not be able to fully open the, the pocket. So uh, it does kind of get in the way, but there is a pocket that in my initial video, I completely missed. And as you've heard me say several times, I've been using this bag as an EDC and it does actually work really well for that application, not just as a travel bag. And I have expanded the space of this a couple times uh, to carry some larger stuff to and from work. like. You may have heard me talk about this in the past, but Mondays is usually grocery day for work. I, we go grocery shopping on the weekend, so if I need to bring waters, coffee, coffee filters, coffee creamer, um, I bring in um, my own salad dressing. Couldn't think of salad dressing. Uh, so my salad dressing, all that stuff I carry. And uh, if I'm using a smaller bag, I'll just utilize a tote bag. Um, but because this is 40 liters, I was able to expand the bag and throw all of my Monday groceries in here and just carry it all to work inside one bag instead of having a backpack and a tote bag. So that was a really nice feature that I noticed. Um, it does work organization wise as a EDC really, really well. And uh, for the days that I needed to carry more, I just expanded it to travel size and it worked out really, really well for me. And now that we have the negatives and points of note out of the way, let's roll into the positive and the very first positive being, this bag works really, really well as an EDC bag. I know I just said that as a point of note, but I was pleasantly surprised to see how well and efficient this bag actually worked as an EDC bag. So it's both top loading and rear loading, so I was able to access anything if I needed something quick. I'd go into the top. If I needed bigger stuff, I'd unzip the back, clamshell it open, get my stuff on the inside. So it actually functioned really, really well for quick access for me. And uh, this front pouch, uh, I didn't use the toiletry kit, but I had the front pouch on here, and this worked really, really well, especially for my quick grab items, like I wanna make sure it's backwards when I pull it out, it's not. I have my work ID I keep in here so I can grab that easy first aid kit because uh, we all know Hazel loves to have those boo-boo band-aids on there all the time, so I keep those in the front pouch very, very easily and readily accessible. I like that the pouch pops off really easy, and honestly, I don't mind the aesthetic of the bag, even without the patch, the pouch on it. These four posts, I don't think they're uh, they're that intrusive. So the bag still looks pretty good, even without the pouch. And then the pouch is very, very simple to put on. Hook your top and your top, and it's the magnets basically catch it, and it just drops in. Give it a little push just to make sure it's locked, and then it's on there, it's good, it's not going anywhere. Now I said I did try this as a travel pack. I put my week's worth of clothes in there. So let's go ahead and cut to Jeff in the field to see how that worked. So here we have the wardrobe packed out for about one week's worth of clothes. The only difference here is uh, right now inside the honeycomb, I have regular cotton t-shirts rolled up where I've recently started switching over to merino wool, which would roll up a little bit smaller and be a little bit lighter. But for this application, I already had these pretty much on hand and ready to go. So I just rolled them up and stuffed them in there. So in the honeycomb here, we have t-shirts, socks, and underwear. In the middle bin, we have shorts and pants because it's kind of August uh, right now. It's that, that intermediate where, you know, go shorts, go pants. So I kind of, what I would pack if I were traveling right now would be this, as well as my button downs in this top compartment here. So this is essentially what I would wear for one week's worth of travel. I have, I believe, uh, two regular pairs of shorts, a pair of swim trunks, a pair of sleeper shorts, and a pair of pants in there. And then I would personally wear either a pair of shorts or a pair of pants, depending upon the weather. This time of the year, I would wear my other pair of shorts. I would also wear one extra button down shirt. And then I have all of my t-shirts here um, that I would wear for one week's worth of travel, socks and underwear. And then the only other thing I would add, basically this kit would be my toiletry and the shoes that I would be wearing. But this is how it, uh, it looks outside of the, the shell backpack right now, all packed up and ready to go in uncompressed. And then here we have the wardrobe compressed down next to the shell backpack. Now I could probably compress down the wardrobe a little bit more, but this is what I feel comfortable doing without completely wrinkling the hell out of my clothes and eyeballing it. It looks like it's about the right size to fit inside the shell backpack. 
So the shell is open. This is a rear access bag. So I have the back of the bag open um, so I can uncompress the shell to fit the wardrobe in. So I'm gonna stick that in right now and uh, see what it looks like. Okay, so before we completely zip it up, the wardrobe is inside the bag. It's basically all the way out right now. I have all the compression on both sides and as well as the front of the bag completely loosened up and it just kind of laying there and it does the wardrobe does fit inside so we're going to go ahead and zip it it does feel like it's going to be a little snug which is hard to do one-handed but if i but there we have the bag completely loaded out for one week's worth of travel and back to Jeff in the studio. The uh, next positive is this bag actually still looks pretty clean. And you can kind of see there's like one little dog hair still stuck on this. This thing was completely covered in dog hair the other day. We went for a hike, Duke was wet. He's blowing out his summer coat for his winter coat. No matter how many times I brush that dog, he still sheds terribly. So the passenger seat of my car was completely covered with dog hair. Forgot to clean it, went to work the next day, put the bag down, grabbed it, completely covered in dog hair, gave it a few brushes, and 95% of it just kind of fell right off. So it actually shed the dog hair really, really well. Only a couple pieces were kind of stuck in the weave, and for the next few days, they just kind of fell off over time. So other than that, the bag still looks really, really clean. You can see there is like one very, very hard to see. There's a little, little tiny, I don't even know if it's coming across on camera, there's a little dark spot like right in here. I can't even see it on the monitor as I'm looking. Maybe in post if I can grade this just right. There's a tiny, tiny dirt spot there. So the bag overall came really, really clean. Now the front pouch you can see there is, where is it, where is it? There is a spot right here. Now this is a different material. This is more of like a vinyl material and this is more of a Cordura feeling material. So the Cordura, even though this is a like almost a white fog gray, this is very, very light. It stayed really, really clean, but this is more of a scuff than a stain or anything. I could probably get something and rub that and that'll probably come off because again, this is more of a vinyl, so it's probably more of a scuff than anything. But the bag overall, I mean, it still looks in great shape. Even Edie seeing this, throwing this on a mound of dog hair, it looks great after quite a bit of use. Now the bag is also pretty comfortable to wear. I didn't have any issues with it. I did wear this over a light jacket. I wore this on the scooter and in the car and the straps themselves, they have a fair amount of foam in them. It's a little thicker than you would think and it is kind of dense, but they have good flex. It did conform to the body, didn't dig into the clavicle or the side of my neck at all. It was actually really, really comfortable to wear. I really liked it. Now all in, all said and done, do I think the Tropic Feel Shell Backpack is worth $249? And as an EDC, no, I don't think it's a $250 EDC pack. I mean, I use it as an EDC. It worked really well for me as an EDC, surprisingly well, but I would definitely put this in like the uh, like 150, 175 range for an EDC pack. You'd also probably be maxing out about 30 liters, 40 liters for an EDC is really big. I've seen people asking about 40 liter EDC bags, so I know people do use that big of a pack for an EDC, but generally you're talking like 20 to 30 liters. Um, and I have this cinched down to about the 20 liter mark. So I think as an EDC, they would definitely have to come down on the price. As a travel pack, honestly, I can't speak to it because I didn't really use it as a travel pack. Uh, so I don't know how it would fair to the rigors of throwing it in and out of an overhead, sliding it in and out or underneath and out of a seat in front of you. Uh, I don't know how it would hold up to that. I feel like the abuse that I gave it over the past month or so is a good indication of how much, how sturdy the bag's gonna be and how well it would stand up. And it did stand up really well. Again, all that dog hair and dirt kind of brushed right off it. I got one tiny mark I can't even see that. It's like one right in there, one tiny mark on the actual body of the bag and like a, a smudge on the uh, vinyl-ish pouch. So it did stay pretty clean. Um, but I think as a travel pack, it might be worth 250. But again, I can't fully speak to it because I use it as an EDC, not as a travel bag. I wish I had a long weekend that I had already had planned that I could have used this for uh, to really test it out. But all in all, it does have good access, both top and back access. The water bottle pockets fit a wide variety of water, bottle of water bottles. Uh, it worked out really well. It's comfortable to wear. It is a bit on the heavy side, completely empty with the travel accessories and the, uh, 
for the grab handles. They're way, way, way too small, especially for a pack this size. Um, so there are a few things that I would personally change about this bag. And then I think if they change those, the two main things for me would be make this thicker, wider, and then remove some of those organization from the inside back pocket because you can't fully utilize it. That would help to cut down at least a little bit on the weight and the bulk of it. That might make it, I, I would say if they did those two things, all day I would probably pay $250 for this as a travel bag. For me, uh, I'm not like a weight watcher. I don't I don't weigh everything and make sure everything's super light. Would I prefer my bag to be a little lighter? Yeah, sure. But if I like the bag, I think it's durable and I like the way it handles. I don't care if it's a little heavier because after all, I'm packing this full of clothes and clothes are gonna end up adding up and weighing quite a bit. So I think it's gonna be a nominal difference if they could cut down a little bit of the weight. My biggest thing, I guess, is definitely going to be these grab handles. These are way too small, especially for a travel bag. So honestly, EDC bag worked really great. I think I would put this more in the like 175 range for an EDC pack. And for a travel bag, I think with a couple modifications to it, I would say this would definitely be worth $249 all day. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up. If you like this video or any more of the videos, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Smash that big red button and ring that bell right next to it so you get notifications the next time I post a brand new video. Good night.